Welcome to our lecture online. In this example, again, we have a source, a heat source and a heat sink. So heat is traveling from T1 to T2. Now on the sink side, where the heat is being received, we're going to keep that in an ice bath kept at zero degrees centigrade. So T2 will be constant at zero degrees centigrade and T1 starts initially at 100 degrees centigrade. Let's just call it T1 initial. And of course, as heat tra transfers from, from the heat source to the heat sink, the temperature will slowly drop in T1. And eventually, when T1 reaches zero degrees centigrade, all heat transfer will stop. What we're trying to do here is come up with an equation that will define the value of the temperature of T1, the heat source, as a function of time. As we saw in the previous video, we're going to set Q equals to MC times T. Now that's the heat contained within this source equals the mass of the source times the specific heat of the source times the temperature of the source. And then if we make that into a differential equation, we can say that dq is equal to mc dt. Now, why the negative? Well, as heat is being transferred away from T1, if we call that a positive quantity, the amount of heat being taken away from T1, then the temperature will drop. And so therefore, we need a negative to indicate that as heat is being transferred, we call that a positive heat transfer, we have a negative change in the temperature. It depends how you want to define it, but that's perfectly fine. The subscript simply means that we're dealing with the source T1 here. And then if we turn that into a, a differential in, with respect to time, that becomes dQ dt is equal to m1c1 minus dt dt. We also have the transfer, heat transfer equation that tells us that dQ dt is equal to Ka over L times the difference in the temperature between the source and the sink. And since the sink is kept at zero, this simply becomes dQ dt is equal to Ka over L times T1. Now what we can do, and this is a good technique, we're going to set these two equations equal to each other. And so that means that on the, uh, let's see here, yeah, on the left side, we can write that Ka over L times T1 is going to be equal to M1 C1 times the negative DT1 over DT. Notice we now have two variables. We have temperature and time, and since we're looking for an equation that expresses temperature as a function of time, we have the correct variables. So let's put all the temperatures on the left side, all the times on the right side. Let's see, can I do that? No, yeah, no, I have to cross multiply. Let's do that. So here we have Ka over M1C1L times dt is equal to, and I'm going to put the negative in front of here, and that's going to be equal to dt1 over t1. All right, that works. Now, of course, it's better to turn the equation around. So we can write this as dt1 over t1 is equal to minus ka over m1 c1 times l times dt. And now I'm ready to integrate both sides. Notice these are all constants. And here, when I integrate this, the, uh, let's say we won't put limits in there. We're just going to head and add the constant of integration and solve for that. So this becomes the natural log of T1 is equal to minus Ka over M1 C1 times L times T plus a constant of integration. Now all we have to do is find the constant of integration by setting T equal to zero. So C is equal to question mark when the time is equal to zero. So make that equal to zero. Then we know that the natural log of T1 initial, because that's what T1 is equal to when time is equal to zero, is equal to C. And so therefore, it turns out that C1 or C is equal to natural log of the initial temperature. So let's move over here. Now we can write that the natural log of T1 is equal to minus K a over m1 c1 times l times t plus the natural log of t1 initial so that's the initial temperature of t1 moving all that over to one side i can say that the natural log 
of T1 divided by T1 initial because when I subtract, subtract the natural log, the same as taking the, the quotient of that, that's going to be equal to minus Ka divided by M1 C1 times L times T. And now I can raise each side of the equation to the exponent E. So E to the natural log of T1 over T1 initial is equal to E to the minus Ka over M1 C1 L times T. And then, of course, this negates this, so we can say that T1 as a function of time is equal to, I can bring this across, T1 initial times E to the minus Ka over M1 C1 L times T. And here we have the general equation that gives us the temperature as a function of time, starting with the initial temperature when t is equal to zero. When t is equal to zero, the initial temperature would be 100. And then, of course, it will exponentially decay as e to the minus ka over mcl times the time. So if you're going to graph this, you can see that we start at a temperature of 100. This would be t1. And as time continues like this, you can see the temperature will drop like this. And that's what this equation signifies. So this is the example where the sink is kept constant and the source can slowly drop in temperature as heat is being transferred. Also realize that as the temperature decreases over time, at least the difference in the temperature decreases over time, the amount of heat being transferred across will decrease proportionally as well. And that's how it's done.